Greetings from DragonCon TV Studio West. Yeah, it's my house with a green screen. Anyway, I wanted to thank everyone who joined us for DragonCon Goes Virtual, especially those of you who got up early or <laughs> stayed up late to watch The Late Show every morning. We ran a bit short on time on our last episode because we had some great comments from our fans and some wonderful guests. So I want to take a moment here to file my love letter for DragonCon. Uh, about five years ago, on a Monday morning much like this, I was holding the in-person version of The Late Show, about to sign off for the weekend. And at that point, you're in a fog of exhaustion, sleep deprivation. It's a bit of a roller coaster of emotions. But at that point, I actually had a little bit of a realization why this con is so important to me. I told the story of when I was five. My first memory of getting a toy is my school teacher mom and my ex-marine engineer dad getting me a C-3PO. It put me on a path to explore strange new worlds, seek out action figures, and boldly watch Doctor Who on PBS after everyone else had gone to bed. The worlds I found at that moment were compelling, hopeful, and deeply weird. And Labor Day is supposed to be our weird weekend. We embrace weird, but this, this year was not the weird that we wanted. After two decades of volunteering for Dragon Con, I look forward to this, my my weird weekend. Embraces a chance to reconnect with found family, meet the people who made these universes real to so many people, admire the creativity of an immense fan-driven community. Earlier this year, I had to come to terms with the fact that this weekend wasn't going to be the same. But two months ago, the family we built over the years made a decision. The show must go on. Reliving that moment of being five reminded me then and now why I do this show. What I remembered was a feeling of hope. Because what we face today is hard. The world today mirrors the gritty realism that critics tend to admire in genre fiction. It's easy to look back on the stories the worlds are built on and find their faults. Those faults are valid. And we use them today to learn how to discover a way to be better. What we fail to see looking back on these stories is their hope. The Cape Crusader of my childhood came from campy reruns, but he has a, a hope and a purpose that finds his way into its best modern interpretations. The Lost Time Lord runs from their past, but they're delighted when, just this once, everybody lives. Rebellions, as we have heard, are built on hope. What the people for the show wanted more than anything was the hope we could put on the show that you loved. Same bad time, same bad channel. But y'all knew that wasn't in the cards. Instead, we learned from our best stories. We discover the world has changed. We set a new course, and we endeavor to be better. Today, today isn't an ending. We're in the second act of our story. We're tired. We're worn down. We, we don't like what got us to this point. Our friends have assembled, and we're ready for the next page. Because in any story, the third act takes hope. And what this weekend has restored in me, and I hope in others, is a hope that... Many of us have lost over the past couple of months. Hope is more than a word. Hope is a form of love. And love keeps her in the air when she ought to fall down. I don't know what Dragon Con 2021 looks like. Based on what my friends have done here, I have hope it's the best that's yet to come. Thank you all, and I hope to see you in person next year in Atlanta.